Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. You know, we've had a crazy two weeks in Sydney. Uh, we've had a scare earlier this week with, you know, brother Ali Bennett. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa. Yesterday, we buried a very dear brother, Muhammad Nagi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him jannah. And just today, wallahi, you know, I got a phone call very early in the morning and we had to bury brother Wasim Shami, you know, 22 years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us so much signs. You know, these last two weeks have been crazy. Every single day, Allah sends us sign after sign, sign after sign. When are we going to take our lives far more seriously? Because every one of us has this deception, these, these high hopes that I've still got a long life ahead of me. And I look at my life and I say to myself, am I ready to go? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life that you're currently living? In? And maybe you're not living a haram life, but these things are occupying me from the real reason why I'm here. And that's to worship Allah. You know, these last few brothers that have died with cancer, you know, especially brother Muhammad Nagi, you know, I really want to focus on this brother because he's really affected me. You know, I look at this brother's life and I say, you know, Alhamdulillah, he was lucky and fortunate enough to have time. Yani Allah gave him a cancer and the way he dealt with it was amazing. It was incredible. You know, the Prophet of Allah says, remember Allah in good times. Allah will remember you in times of difficulty. And this for me was Nagi all over. Muhammad nailed this. This was a man who loved Allah and his Prophet when he was fine, he was healthy, he was going and coming. He loved Dawah, he loved to talk to people, he loved this community. And everyone knew him for this. Wallahi, whenever I would visit him, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this. He was always in high spirits, always thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, two days before he fell into his last coma, I went to visit him. And so much passion and so much energy. You know, he sat me down, he's telling me, you know, and I want to do this and I want to go to Africa, you know, and I want to give da'wah and I want to make this, you know, short film and I want to do this and I want to do that. And so many things, he had so much ideas. I remember walking away, I'm thinking, man, this is a man that's got cancer and look at the energy. You know, his brothers, his brothers were telling me today that even while he was semi-unconscious, you know, laying there in his bed, he would write letters, you know, he would write letters to his brothers, make sure you feed my wife. Make sure you fill up petrol for my wife. You know, he would think about his wife, even though he was semi-unconscious. He was thinking about his wife. Wallahi, when I visited him in the hospital, he says, I can't wait to go home so I can kiss my mother's feet. I'm thinking, wow, man. I'm alive. I'm perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And that's never crossed my mind. You know, he would sit there, he would sit there in bed, and the nurse would walk in. A non-Muslim nurse would walk in and he would point with his finger. And his brother said, you know, we could never work out. And what's he pointing at? He, he used to point, telling his brothers, give the nurse some sweets, form of da'wah. Oh, wow, Allahu Akbar. Allah, just the things this brother used to do it affected me so much. You know, never did I ever go to Punchbowl Mosque. Never did I ever go there, except I would see this brother there. Always, he was there, give salam, big smile on his face, he's talking to the brothers. And the Prophet of Allah, he says, you know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you see someone frequent in the masjid, then bear witness that this man has Iman. I think, wow, Allah, this brother has affected me so much that I'm envious. And I ask myself, you know, how would I leave? Because Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the angel of death, will not send you a WhatsApp message. He's not going to send you an email. Trust me, there's no letter coming in the mail saying, hey, you've got two weeks, get ready, I'm coming around. When he comes, he comes unannounced. And look at the life you're living now. Look at the lifestyle you're in now. Look at your relationship with Allah now. That's a very good indication of the way you're going to die. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give brother Muhammad Nagi and all the brothers that have passed away and all the sisters that have passed away. Wallahi, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify them, to forgive them for their shortcomings, to give them the highest level of Jannah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all of those that are sick and suffering. You know, make it easy on the families of those that have lost loved ones. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality of life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.